morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. This morning we'll be going over inflammation for our health portion. Trust everyone has a note, so let's open up with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us here this morning. We thank you for your many blessings upon us and for this holy Sabbath day. We ask that your presence may be with us and that as we go over this health portion that we may not only see, see it sp um, physically but also spiritually. Please help us to overcome self and sin. And also, um, please help this message to resonate in our hearts and to be a help to those who are hearing it. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. So inflammation, the word inflammation traces back to the Latin word for set of fire. Inflammation is the body's immune system response to an irritant. And this response is characterized by these five symptoms, pain, heat, redness, swelling, and loss of function. All of these point to um, inflammation. While some inflammation produces a palpable response, others can often go undetected or present as a fatigue or mild fever. Inflammation does not necessarily mean that there is an infection, but that an infection, but an infection can cause inflammation. When inflammation occurs, in the body, the immune system releases two hormones, bradykinin and histamine. And we know histamine, of course, with allergies, so that's why they usually um, um, give people antihistamines, known as inflammatory mediators, while dil which dilate the nerves, excuse me, for increased blood to the area and cause irritation in the nerve, sending pain signals to the brain. This has a protective function. If the inflammation hurts you, if the inflammation hurts, you tend to protect the affected part of the body. But if you don't experience pain, the alarm goes undetected and the body continues to be inflamed. <clears throat> so here we're already seeing that pain, the pain that, that, that is produced through the, the inflammation raises an alarm that tells us that there's something wrong here, take care of it. The body receives pain signals from nerve receptors when inflammation occurs. These signals result from complex responses and interactions between cells and chemicals in the body. Now under the portion of pain. But we must have a knowledge of ourselves. This is COL 158.2, Christ Object Lessons. A knowledge that will result in contrition before we can find pardon and peace. The Pharisee felt no conviction of sin. The Holy Spirit could not work with him. His soul was encased in a self-righteous armor, which the arrows of God barbed in, with which the arrows of God barbed in true, aimed by angels' hands, failed to penetrate. It is only he who knows himself to be a sinner that Christ can save. He came to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, out to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. <clears throat> Luke 4, verse 18, but we are not, but they that are whole need not a physician. And it says, we must know our real condition or we shall not feel our need of Christ's help. We must understand our danger or we shall not flee to the refuge. We must feel the pain of our wounds or we should not desire healing. And so this pain is the same that we experience when an inflammatory response is given in the body. This pain is the conviction that tells us that there is need for repentance with sin, and it tells us that there is a need for reform in the body. Without this pain, without this conviction, then you stay in your sin, you stay in your sickness because you're unaware that something's happening. And you can see this example with um, people who have, what is it called, um, fatty liver disease. In a, big, in a bigger person, you can more likely to tell that there's something wrong with this person. But then other skinny um, s people that are skinny or very slim can often have the same problem, but you're less likely to see it. They're less likely aware of it because they're not seeing it physically shown outright in their bodies that they need to make a change in their diet. And so most of those people end up 
dying or having a heart attack or, or stroke or having um, can most likely die from that problem as opposed to those who are seeing a symptom because you're slim you think everything is fine and so you have no need of reform but <clears throat> When there is pain, when there's an outward show of what's happening in the body, it shows us need for reform, the same in faith as is in physically in the body. Um, Go ahead. Oh, uh huh. So I was thinking, you know, that, that, yeah. that I remember watching a story about a young girl. She was very skinny, and she was like, "Hey, anything to cheat for Exactly. Her? You know, I can eat anything. You know, I, I don't gain a pound. Mm -hmm. And then I, I remember that now. I'm thinking of, I, 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 I can't imagine her health. You know, because this is like probably ten or fifteen years ago when I watched the show. So I can imagine her health because you know most mm -hmm. things don't show up immediately. Because when you get to your thirties, forties, and even later. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Um, it's I a. I just remember the quote you had read about. It's the same thing that happens um, with sin as well. That's why Sister White ha has a quote that says, because, because punishment for sin is not given. Somebody help me out. Because what? It's Ecclesiastes. Because, of, because does not execute exceedingly the, the hearts of men. Um, Yes. So because you don't see, you're not seeing a repercussion, you're not seeing um, the end yet for what you're doing, then you, you continue in that wrong path. And that's why um, in the Bible, it also tells us that um, no more will these, the, the days will no, no more be prolonged, that that judgment will come to pass. Amen. Man, and that verse also says, be, um, it talks about the prophecies, man, I'm not remembering. Um, it said, the judgment, the vision faileth. No more will they say that the vision faileth, but it will come speedily. Are you guys aware, do you remember the passage? Ezekiel, right. Okay. Moving on. So the call for change. S-O-O-A-P 254.1. In effecting this restoration, you have mainly to uh, obviate that inflammation already shown to have chiefly engendered your sufferings and produced disease. Reduce it and you both forestall farther injury and give to nature your great physician an opportunity to repair the breach. This nature is the body. The body was made, God made the body in a way that it can, re it can fix itself when given the right conditions. And so the right conditions is not only the environment, that the body is in, but what you're putting in it and what you're putting on it and how you're taking care of it each day. So that those changes help to help to give the body a fighting chance to overcome this inflammation. Next quote, GC 88, 462.3. This is the result of the work of the Spirit of God. There is no evidence of genuine repentance unless it works reformation. If he restores the pledge, give again that he has robbed, confess his sins, and love God and his fellow men. The sinner may be sure that he has found peace with God. Such were the effects that in former years followed seasons of religious wake awakening. Judged by their fruits, they were known to be blessed of God and salvation of men and uplifting of and the uplifting of humanity. And so this key point here that there is no evidence of genuine repentance unless it works reformation. And so the same reformation has to be worked not only in us spiritually, but also physically in our bodies so that we may, so that this fire that's been set ablaze in our bodies, which translate to this inflammation, can be lowered. And God, as we'll see further on, gives us the right foods, the right word. His word itself is an in, in anti-inflammatory that gets rid of this fire that's burning within or this fevered state of body, of the body. 4SP 297.3 The law of God is an agent in every genuine conversion. There can be no true repentance without conviction of sin. <clears throat> and this conviction, as we went over, this is the pain, this is the inflammation that you're feeling that's telling you that there's a need for reform. The scripture declares that sin is the transgression of the law and that by the law is the knowledge of sin. 
In order to see his guilt, the sinner must test his character by God's great standard of righteousness. To discover his defect, he must look into the mirror of the divine statues. But while the, the law reveals his sin, it provides no remedy. The gospel of Christ alone can offer pardon. So I'm seeing this law here, while it reveals this sin, it's merely the diagnosis. It's telling you that you're sick. It's telling you that you're in need of Christ. But the diagnosis is not giving you the remedy. It's just like, I'm, I'm hurting somewhere here. Okay, now it tells me, oh, it's such and such. But the remedy, as we're, but the remedy itself can only be found in Christ and the things that God has given to rectify man's bodies. <clears throat> in order to stand, excuse me, the gospel of Christ alone can offer pardon. So God, the gospel of Christ alone is this remedy, this, an, this greatest um, natural and anti-inflammatory for this state. Without true repentance, there can be no true conversion. Many are deceived here, and too often their entire experience proves to be a deception. This is why so many are joined to the church. So many joined to the church have never been joined to Christ. And so so many joined to the, the church have only had a revelation that they are sinners, but not have not or that they have been diagnosed as sinners, but not have come to the realization of the natural remedy that they need to rectify this sin or not have been joined to Christ as we need in order to be overcome of this fire that's that's been set within us. And so. Since we know about inflammation now and what it is and what um, some of the things that it can cause in the body, um, some of the most inflammatory things that we can put in our bodies, I've come up with three. This is not in your notes, but um, one of the main and biggest um, inflammatory, food, inflammatory foods would be sugar. Sugar to a person that, that is inflamed and take, that has chronic inflammation is not good for us because sugar causes your body to release inflammatory messengers called cytokines. Anti-inflammatory diet experts often say that you should cut out all, all added sugar, even those such as um, agave and honey for some. And so sugar, because it, it increases the cytokines, and if you, you can look into this on your own, cytokines um, are these messengers that tell your body to produce more inflammation. So sugar to somebody who has chronic inflammation is something that should be reduced in your diet. And so another problem, uh, a second one would be um, using the wrong fats. So we can see this in um, the use of the increased use in processed foods of hydrogenated oils, like margarine for those who are Caribbean, we know that yellow tub, um, and trans fats. And so these are the wrong fats that clog the arteries and that causes that increased inflammation in the body. And also this next one, which is more more common and we of course all know of is meat, meat and alcohol, all, infl all things that causes a lot of inflammation in the body. And so some of the anti-inflammatory foods, one of the greatest anti-inflammatories would be omega-3 fatty acids. Now we spoke about how the wrong fats can cause, can increase inflammation in the body. And so the opposite is true. Having the right fats in the body can decrease inflammation. And omega-3 fatty acids is the main one. Now for us who do not consume um, meat or dairy um, in the world, when they promote omega-3 fatty acids, it's usually with the consumption of increased fish. But we know that flax seeds have the same and even greater um, benefits um, for us. So an, um, a good option for omega-3 fatty acids would be increasing our flax seed content. So that's in flax seeds, chia seeds, and even sunflower seeds. We can get, we can increase our omega-3s. So if you don't consume um, flax seeds, you can also have the flax seed oil. Sorry, flax seed oil um, also helps to lower inflammation. Two tablespoons a day should do it. And a second one would be curcumin, turmeric, which is the active ingredient in turmeric, does the same thing. It's an anti-inflammatory as well as um, turmeric and ginger. And also the main one, which we do even more, is having a plant-based diet that's rich in greens and vegetables. So to sum all that up, eat a plant-based diet and have good oils 
in your diet, such as omega-3, more in omega-3 so that you can have a better balance of omega-3 to omega-6. And also um, using herbs that, that decrease inflammation such as turmeric and ginger. And so in closing, let's read our last couple paragraphs, quotes. PTUK, November 17th, 1898, page 723.8. It is the conviction that their case is hopeless that prevents men from rising out of the degradation of self-indulgence. The man who feels the appetite asserting itself in him and clamoring for gratification realizes that the resistance which he purpose making, purpose making against the temptation is gradually melting away and feels that it is impossible to struggle against his own nature. But if in that hour he can know that there is a power which him with him which is stronger than the appetite and that ceasing to struggle he has but to call for help upon one who is mighty the knowledge will beget in him the confidence that brings the victory this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith jesus christ has come in every man's flesh and for this reason nothing is impossible to the man who knows it every spirit that confesses that jesus christ has come in the flesh of in the flesh is of God. <clears throat> and greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And so this quote here empowers us to do the, to, to adopt the right principles and the right um, foods that help to decrease this inflammation and gives us the power to overcome appetite, to overcome doing the practices and things that um, causes this inflammation physically and spiritually. And the last sentence of that quote, no man can become, can be a successful temperance worker who cannot bear testimony to this fact, for there is no other way of salvation given, um, given among men. D, Desire of Ages 659.2, our Lord says, under conviction of sin, remember that I died for you. So under pain, under stress, under these things that causes inflammation to our bodies, remember that the Lord died for you. When oppressed and persecuted and afflicted for my sake and the gospels, remember my love so great that, that for you I gave my life. So when we're afflicted with our maladies, when, we're <clears throat> when the pain is so strong that we don't know what to do, we should remember these promises. When your duties appear stern and severe and your burdens too heavy to bear, remember that for your sake I endured the cross, despising the shame, when your heart shrinks from the trying ordeal, remember that your Redeemer liveth to make intercession for you. And last quote, he said to his disciples, I am with you always. He is constantly present among us. In the sick cham chamber, there is Jesus, ready to comfort the afflicted disciple who lies on that bed of pain. In the secret spot to which the sinner has retired to confess his sins, there is Jesus saying, waiting to say, be of good cheer, thy sins are forgiven thee go in peace. And so I pray that this would be a help to all those who suffer from pain, especially those who suffer from chronic pain and inflammation, and that the Lord has, has given his promises that he will be with us and has given us natural things, um, natural things and herbs and things that, that will help our body to overcome this fire. And he is the only one that when we're burning in this fire, just as he did for the, for the, the, he, the, the Hebrew boys, sorry, just as he did for Shadrach, uh, Meshach, and Abednego when they were in the furnace and took away that fire, he can do the same thing for us when we're dealing with inflammation in the trials of, of life. Mm -hmm. So with that said, is there anything before we close? Any questions? Uh, two tablespoons. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time that we've had to go over this health portion. I pray that those who, who were here and even those who have heard may have taken something of this that will either help us, help them physically and or spiritually and that it will, and that it will help, to, help us to, to trust in your promises, to trust in the things that you have given us to aid us in our, to aid our bodies when, we're, when, when the, it's afflicted, to help us remember that even in our pain, Lord, that this conviction is necessary to do a work of reform in us. And so help us to bear the pain that we feel physically in our bodies, whether it's through sickness or whether it's through, through labor, and also help us to feel the, feel the pains in the, 
in th that we will feel in the times of trouble and, that rem and to remember therein that you will also continue to be with us and that even in the trouble that we have to a little time of peace to look forward to. And so the same with our pain and the same physically that we have that healing is to come and that joy cometh in the morning. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.